Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video. This week I made some modular river tiles to work with the modular grass tiles that I made in my last video. This is the second video in the series to kind of create an outdoor environment for outdoor encounters. Now this tile set was heavily inspired by the YouTube channel Devs and Dice. They have a great modular river tile set. Mine's a bit different because I wanted just to work with the three by three inch kind of tiles instead of being a more organic one. So this is one where you can kind of build kind of here and there how you want it to look and have it sit exactly with your three by three inch tiles. I intentionally made this one very straightforward and didn't go for a high amount of detail. One reason is because I didn't want to have to buy a bunch of new products. I just wanted to use what I had on hand. Uh, we are living in a pandemic and income is not as great as normal. So I went that route and I wanted it to be very approachable. Uh, and I feel like this is extremely approachable as far as uh, ease of doing it. You just need a few things from Amazon and you'll be good to go. And yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look at how I made them and I uh, hope you enjoy. So the material that I'm working with is actually called Plasticard. This is an awesome material actually. It's about honestly the same material as a credit card and uh, you can find it on Amazon. There is a link in the description below if you want to find this particular product, but it's seriously fantastic. Um, so what I did was I first cut everything uh, into three inch strips and then again cut them with into three inch squares from there. Now, as far as cutting these, the first times I cut them, I used a razor blade and that works actually really well. I uh, just take a couple passes and use a very straight edge. Uh, I have this nice uh, kind of cutter here that I used. It cuts through thicker material. I don't, I can't speak for other uh, cutting tables like this, but uh, this particular one, the Cutter Pillar Pro, seriously it cuts through a lot of stuff. And it cut through this, it cuts through chipboard really well. It's been a fantastic tool. Another really great thing about Plasticard is that it actually cuts with scissors really well. So I kind of figured out how many tiles I wanted and what shapes I wanted them to be. And then I just drew a line on there uh, for the kind of curved pieces with a pencil and then just cut along that line and then use that one as a stencil for the rest of them. Um, I went back and forth on a lot of what I was gonna be doing here and what pieces I was gonna make. Ultimately, I think you'll have to decide for yourself what's gonna work best for your table. Like you might notice the other smaller, thinner pieces that I have up there, I ended up not using those this time around. I may in the future, but uh, a little bit more, I guess, research will have to be done before I decide what I'd do with those. But get all these cut out to the shapes that you want, and then you go on to the next step. Since I was mainly gonna be using these with my outdoor grass tiles, I got them out to kind of brainstorm exactly what I should do with these pieces and where things should lie as far as uh, kind of banks and things like that. So I took the pieces, kind of sandwiched them between two of my outdoor pieces and got a good idea of where I needed to kind of allow for space to put in some dirt and grass on the edges. And then I just penciled those in uh, before I painted. Before I committed to painting all of them, I did a few test pieces of some leftover strips that I had and I, you know, just kind of used different colors in the variation to kind of get the general idea of what I was going for. And then I ultimately decided on, I believe, this last one here and used that as my final kind of template to paint. Honestly, I would have done this differently, not as far as uh, the colors I used, but how I painted them. I probably would have painted the longer strips before I cut them into three inch squares. So that way they would all kind of join together. You'll see what I'm talking about at the end because I was using this just with a paintbrush. Uh, you could probably do an airbrush and get a better result. But with a paintbrush, I felt like I had some issues with them lining up together and looking uh, continuous. Again, you'll see at the end. Now 
After I got all those painted, it was time to apply the first coat of Mod Podge. This is the gloss Mod Podge to have a nice kind of, you know, wet look to it because it is a river and it's filled with water. I do multiple coats of this, but the first coat really does kind of protect the paint there because we're going to be applying dirt and grass to the edges there that I did not cover. And I don't want to get that on the paint and then have to brush it off and scrape away some of that paint revealing the white plastic card underneath. I then moved on to actually adding the banks and I did this just with some PVA glue and I've started with just the dirt first. I did the entire bank. I did about a quarter inch on the edges uh, with the dirt first and then I overlay the grass afterwards. So just get the glue and I smear it on there with a brush and then I spoon on the dirt and then tap it off, tap off all the excess back into the dirt uh, cup there. Now when you do this, your dirt's going to get on the water effects there. So you have to wipe it off. And if the Mod Podge wasn't on there, then you'd probably be scraping off some of your paint, like I said. So this is why the Mod Podge first coat is very important before you go in and do the dirt and grass. So once I was finished, it was time to let it dry and then apply the grass. Now this is just basically a repeat of what we did with the dirt except what we're going to do is we're going to not cover all of the dirt. We're only going to go about halfway in from the outer edge, making sure to get that outer edge as well so the white plastic card is not exposed, and then pour on the grass mixture. Now these two mixtures I shared in my last video, so if you're curious about those, go check them out. It's the grass tiles one, and they have worked phenomenally. I've already used the grass tiles a few times in uh, some sessions that I've played, and they've been fantastic. I love them so much. I then cleaned off the kind of excess dirt on the river there with a wet paper towel and we were good to go. Now the dirt and the grass that you put on is very soft and if you watch my last video you know that is the case. And so we need to make sure we coat them and make sure that they are hard and resilient so they don't flake off over use. And I did this, uh, this time around, with just a mixture of watered down Mod Podge. Uh, pretty watered down, you want it so it doesn't dry white, and get a good mix so it kind of mixes in there nicely. And then make sure you get it again on that outer edge, uh, so that won't peel off. Uh, it might peel off a little bit, but uh, you'll be okay uh, in the long run, I think. It's just one of those things you get over, but uh, after you let this dry it'll dry nice and clear and it'll be nice and solid too and resilient to being handled and thrown around and then the last step is to go back in and do another coat or as many coats as you want of the gloss mod podge what i did here was i made sure i got a thick bead next to the banks and then made sure i got thick beads kind of spread out through the middle uh, to give it a nice kind of risen texture now you can do whatever you want here uh, you can go in afterwards once it's dried and add more water effects or water texture with some other products. I opted not to do this again because I wanted to just use what I had on hand and wanted it to be very approachable and affordable. And here's a good close-up of those beads all dried and everything. Makes it look nice and rivery. And then for a bonus step if you want to do it, I went back through and just took a sharpie and darkened those edges so they wouldn't show up white. These aren't going to join together exactly and seamlessly always, so it's a good idea to darken them so they don't stand out and kind of break up the river flow. But really that's it. Very simple, straightforward project. So let's roll a montage of them being used on the grass terrain that I made in my last video. Again, if you haven't seen that video, please go check it out. I hope you enjoy the montage.
enjoyed that little montage there. Uh, it was fun to put together. Now, my next project is going to be, again, another video in a series for this outdoor environment. And I've kind of been working on it. It's close to being done. So hopefully I'll have a video out in a week or so. But uh, thank you so much for all the recent subscribers again and the comments and the likes. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Share with anyone you feel might find value in these videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.